Lord, we have come again today. You have promised that where two or three are gathered together, you are there in their midst. And today is the first Sunday of the month of October. We want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to honor you for how you have cared for us till this time. We want to also say, because we saw your hands in our lives, we believe you will continue to be with us. Even as we consider this uh, word of God, we pray that you will speak to our hearts. And when the time comes to praise you, Lord, we pray you'll be honored in our midst in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father, because you know your answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today, we want to consider the power in praise. The power in praise. And I pray that in God's power and in his love, you will excel in your own life and in your family in Jesus' name. Turn with me to the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 4. The book of Acts chapter 4. We are going to read from verses 23 to 31. In Acts chapter 4, from verse 23. I read, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they had that, well, when they had that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of the servant David has said, why did the hidden rage? And the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together for to, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel do determine before to be done. In verse 29, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs of wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. In verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God, we are looking at the power of praise. If you look at the prayer that these, these individuals pray. You can understand that they were really not just mere prayers. In the beginning, they told God who they know who God is. In this very message, we want to look at it also, so that we will understand the meaning. Why do we have to pray? Why do we have to praise God? Why do we have to honor Him? Why do we have to adore Him? Why do we have to lift him up? What is the meaning? And what actually should be the message? And what should be the purpose for praising God? I pray as you look, <clears throat> as you look at these three areas, the meaning, the message, 
and and the motive God in his love we direct our hearts to praise him today in Jesus name so we want to look at the meaning and reason of praise and worship why do we praise God why do we honor him if you look at the verses of the scriptures that you've read this Acts chapter 4 we saw that the people the children or the disciples we are already passing through some situation that they didn't quite agree with. They saw that things were not moving the way they wanted. But they did not just want to say, okay, let us pray. And everybody started praying. When they decided that they were to pray, they first of all told God who and what they think this God is. He is the God Almighty. So in our own life today, I want you to understand. Situation may not be exactly as you wanted, but as we praise God today, as we honor Him, we will see that the God that is able to shake things around will shake things around in your life in Jesus' name. Here we saw that they lifted up their voices and they did that with one accord. And as they, as they did that, they made God to see who they know God is. Let us look at it again. In that verse 23, it said, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they had, and when they had that, they lifted up their voice to Lord, they lifted up their voice. And if you look at what they said, they said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in at all that in them is. Who by the mouth of the servant David has said, Why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine vain things. Now, when you look at that area. They, they were trying to tell how David also saw the enemies, all that they did. But after they finished, the Bible says that the place where they were started shaking. And I pray all your problems, they will all shake as we praise this almighty God today in Jesus' name. Praise and worship remind God who he is that is just what it is you know our god is the almighty he is the one that created the heavens and the earth he knows it but when men tell him that we know you did this this is not just the work of evolution this is not just the work of anything it is you that made the heavens and the earth so whatever problem that is in this earth that you have made you can handle that Whatever happens in heaven, you can take care of it because you made them. All the materials, everything that were used to make this, this thing, this heaven and earth, came from you. And because of that, we believe that all the little problems that we are passing through, you can handle it. What should remind God? What should bring God's attention to that? Then God starts to walk in your life. And also, when you, you know, when we are bringing this before the Almighty God, we don't just say it was; we repeat it. God, you did this. You did that. If you look at the very uh, verses of the scriptures that we read, we saw that what they were saying, what uh, 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 the things that they were saying, were things that actually took place. And in fact, they even bring, they brought different versions, different areas of what happened. And they brought them in and they were reminding God. You created heavens and the earth. We saw that in uh, Genesis. And you, when you look at the stories of, of, uh, uh, of David, most of the things that David spoke, they were in, uh, in the book of Psalm. And they brought everything out and they told God. We know you are God, you are great, and you can do anything. And as they were praising him and honoring him, God came down. He will come down in our lives in Jesus' name. 
Turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. In Isaiah chapter 43, we are going to read from verse 21. Isaiah 43, 21. I read. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Praise the Lord. So when you are looking at the meaning of praise, the reason that men should praise and worship God, you can see. The reason why we have to do that is because that was even why we were made. That was even why we were called out of the people. You know, if you go to uh, different assemblies, I'm not talking about church now, different areas, the people praise the people or the person or something that they think that has done some good things in their lives. But God did not want to share his, uh, he did not want to share his honor with an object. He called us out. And when he called us out, he expects that we give him the glory, give him the honor, give him the adoration. Number one, for the fact that he called us out. He did not call us out and we are ignorant of what we are. No, that's not why. Because anyone that is born again today knows that I used to be this and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now. And because of what they know that they are into, they know that this thing is greater than just ordinary living your life. They know that this one is deeper. This one is about the Almighty God preparing me for the kingdom. And I pray as we continue, we will, we will be able to really dip ourselves into praising God, always honoring Him, exalting Him. Because He has praised, He has uh, brought us into this. He has called us out of the world so that we will be able to praise Him. In Jeremiah, chapter 13. Jeremiah chapter 13. We want to read from verse 11. Let us look at it. In Jeremiah chapter 13 and in verse 11 I read. He said, For as the gate of cleavage to the, to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, said the Lord, said the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory, but they would not hear. Praise the Lord. If you look at here, it is like, you know, when you are, when you, you have done almost everything that you think you want to do. And it is like, this thing is not working the way I expected. It is like a statement of regret. That is what God is saying here. Looking at the children of Israel, looking at how he wanted them to be so close to him. And in fact, the more, the closer they are to the Almighty God, the more they are distant from the enemies. And the more they are able to withstand every enemy that will come against them. God knew that. There is no way God can be in your family and the devil is raging, destroying things. No. But here, when you look at what happened here, God says, but these very people would not hear. They would not listen. But the intention of God was clear. And I also want us to understand that when we talk about the children of Israel, we should also look inward to see what God has also proposed for the church of God. Because when you look at the church of God, there is actually a reason why we are born again. And I pray God will give us that grace to understand why we are born again in Jesus' name. In Ephesians, Ephesians, turn with me to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, we want to read from verse 6 
Ephesians 1 verse 6 I read to the praise of the glory of his grace when he had made us accepted in the beloved praise the Lord you can see the reason why we have been accepted to become the beloved of God and that is talking about the church Paul was telling the church in Ephesus don't look at the things around you, but look at the fact that you were called to the beloved just so that you will be a praise unto the Almighty God. Let's read it again. He said to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. You can see that. And because that is the purpose of the church, then the church should be able to work hard. You know, it is easy for us to uh, think that the children of Israel did not do what they were supposed to do. But the church is the church doing what they're supposed to do. Turn with me to the book of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 5. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. And we are going to read from verse 16. Matthew 5, verse 16. I read. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Praise the Lord. Jesus was telling the disciples and he's telling the church today that the purpose for which we are called out of the world, the purpose for which we are delivered from all our enemies, the purpose for which God has reached out to us so that we might be his children is that when the world sees what is going on in our lives they will glorify the almighty God. In fact he wants the world, those who are yet to be born again to glorify him. Why would they glorify him? Because of what he has done in our lives. And I pray we will not just be there not being able to achieve the goals that God has set forth for his own church in Jesus' name. So because we know that that was why we are here, we should be able to, you know, sit today and by the grace of God, praise the Almighty God, and we will do that in Jesus' name. The message of praise and worship. The message of praise and worship. Talk with me to the book of Psalm. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, we want to read from verse 1. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Praise the Lord. That is the message, remember, that this is, this is the Almighty. And because he is the Almighty, the Bible tells us, as children of God, we are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And because of that, we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Now when you read further, you will see that what David was, the psalmist was telling the, the children of uh, Israel, is also what the church should know today. Let us read in verse, two, uh, in verse 2. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely, He shall deliver, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noise of pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. You can see that when you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, there will be no arrow that can get to you. And I pray you will enjoy that in Jesus' name. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. 
Let us read in verse 8. I read, All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with sin, but the ear filled with hearing. I pray, even in our lives, God will feel everything that pertains to us in Jesus' name. He will take care of us. He will bless us. And he will make his name glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. When you look at all that the Almighty God is teaching us, we'll be able to see that the message of our praise is that this God is higher than the highest being on the face of the earth. You know, when you look at the, uh, uh, when you look at the earth, you look at the things that are around us, I want you to understand that there are some times that we are scared of authorities and powers. We are, we are scared of the things that possibly we've been taught when we were younger, but we want to, we, in this, in the word of God, the word of God is telling us that there is one that is greater than that which we are afraid of, and that is the Almighty God. Because He's the Almighty God, we are going to exalt, exalt His almightiness. We are going to praise Him. We are going to honor Him. We are going to glorify Him. We are going to so lift Him up that all those other things which we, we were afraid of in the past, they will be smaller and smaller. And I pray we will do it today in Jesus' name. The motive of praise and worship. The motive of praise and worship. Talk with me to the book of Psalm 44. In Psalm 44, we want to read from verses 5 to 7. I read. Through thee will we push down our enemies. Through thy name will we tread them under we will we tread them under the rise up against us for i will not trust in my power neither shall my sword save me but thou hast saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us praise the lord you know that there are sometimes you see people who just hate you they didn't hate you because of maybe what you have done. It could be just something that you yourself you can't understand. But God is saying, the word of God is saying that those people should not be a problem to you because God will put them in their proper place in Jesus' name. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. I'm going to read from verses 1 to 4. I read. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of His name. Make His praise glorious. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works! Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Seal. Praise the Lord. We can see here that God, the, the word of God is telling us that what we really need to do today is to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We should sing of his honor. We should sing of his praise. We should sing of his glory. We should describe his terribleness when it comes to performing his duties, when it comes to delivering his own people, when it comes to working miracles for his children's sake. His works are, are past finding out. There is nothing that, you know, when we think that this is just the only thing God can do, God will do great, greater things. You know, when when I was uh, reading, preparing for this message, there were many things that 
I looked up and I said, how great thou art. I pray today as we praise the Almighty, we will get to the point in our lives that we will, we will be so assured that this God is great and he is mighty and he will show his mighty power in our lives in Jesus' name. In Psalm, Psalm 50, turn with me to Psalm 50. We want to read from verses 14 to 17. I read, Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glory, glorify me. Praise the Lord. In the times of trouble, call upon him. God has promised he will do whatever he says, and he will do it in your life in Jesus name. When you read from verse 22, it says, now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver, to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show, will I show the salvation of God. I pray today he will show his salvation to you in Jesus' name. Turn, turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 1. In the book of Luke chapter 1, we are looking at the motive of praise and worship. Why do we have to praise him? What should be our motive? It is because we have testimonies of his great power of his authority, of his wonders, of all that our God can do. In verse 37 of that Luke chapter 1, in verse 37 I read, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Praise the Lord. With God nothing shall be impossible. So when you are looking at some situation in your life, and you are thinking, what can I do about this? God says, with me, nothing is impossible. The things around you may be looking very, very uh, different from what you have been thinking, but look away from that situation and look upon God. And God in his infinite mercy and love will show that with him there is nothing impossible. In Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 10, let us read Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 10. Because in this very place, we see that God is the only one that reserves the right to open heaven upon his own children. He will do it when he wants to do it. In verse 10, I read, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Praise the Lord. And open heaven will be upon you today as you praise this almighty God in Jesus' name. He has the power. He has the strength. He can do whatever he wants to do. Nobody can challenge this God. He is able to do it. And because he has the power, because he has the strength, because he can do it, that is why when we are to praise God, number one, we can name all, we can number the things that we think God has done in our lives, and we will praise him. But when we also see what, we, what the Bible is talking about God, then we should praise him with all our heart, because this God, is able to do anything, anything. Turn with me to Numbers chapter 16. In Numbers chapter 16, we are going to read from verse 28. Numbers 16, verse 28, I read. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of my own mind. Then in verse 29, if these men die 
the common death of all men, or if they if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord had not sent me. In verse 30, but if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. In verse 31, and it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground cleave asunder that, that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Praise the Lord. A terrible God, a mighty God, a great God. That is the God that you serve. If you look at this God, you know that He will do. And nobody can ask him, why did you do this? Nobody can say, I'm going to take you to court. Because there is no court that can handle the case of the Almighty. And because of that, when we are praising him, when we are honoring him, there may be people that are, that are bragging, you know, you know, saying that they will do this, they will do that. Don't mind all those people. Because this God is the God that has the power that can even open the earth, open the ground, and enemies will be swallowed up. And I pray that God in his law will show his mercy to his people and people will give their lives unto him in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. In Exodus, turn with me to Exodus. Exodus. In Exodus chapter 14, we saw that the sea, God made a way where there was no way. These children of Israel, because it's a long verse, I don't want to go, you know, the children of Israel, they left Egypt and they were to go to the promised land. God had told them, you are going to the promised land. But while they were going, there was a barrier. And that barrier was a Red Sea. Now, let us understand that when we are talking about sea, actually, seas are not like rivers. Seas are just like, you know, that they are a body of water. When you get to a sea, all that you can see will be water. It's, it's not just like a stream. It is not like a river. In fact, there are some rivers that you look at is so wide. But when they are talking about sea, you don't see the air. In fact, you don't even know how the water is flowing. You only see the, the, the water clapping, you know. You see the storm because of the, of the air. You don't even know the side that they are flowing towards. But God, the, the Bible tells us that when these very people go to the, to the sea, they were troubled. Many of them started talking. And they just continued to accuse Moses. You just brought us here. You would have left us in the other place. It would have been better, I mean, to, for, that for us to come and die inside this water. For us to jump into this water and I'll die. Or for these people to come and get us here. But while they were complaining, Moses spoke to the Almighty God. He said, move forward. And then he asked him, what do you have in your hand? Raise it up. And as soon as he did that, the Bible says, God made a way, I pray, in your life. As you praise him today, because he is the only one that can make a way when there is no way. In fact, he is the only one that after he has done it, or before he does it, everybody will say there is nothing you can do about this. But when he, after he has finished you will see that the whole earth will know that this is not the handwork 
of man. And I want you to understand, we are going to rise up now. We want to praise this God that is able to do all things. The God that cannot fail. The God that says with him, there is nothing impossible. With God, there is nothing that you can say, oh, this one cannot be done. No, that is not God. The Bible says he created heavens and the earth. He created everything. So everything that we can see here, God created them. When we talk about wealth, God created every single thing on the face of the earth. And because he created it, there is nothing that he cannot take care of. Is it the man that God made with sand that there is issue with and God cannot take care of that thing? The sand is still there. He can still bring it and then mend every area that is having problem. Our God is a mighty God. There is nothing that he cannot do. So let us just worship him. Let us honor him. Let us glorify his name because this God is God. You are suffering and you are looking at it and you say, what are they saying? Oh, join us. Worship this God because your suffering can be taken care of and you will be like somebody that is having a dream. Talk to God. Bless him. Honor him. Exalt him. Glorify his name. He is the almighty God. There is nothing that he cannot do. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For Thou hast created all things and for the pleasures they Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for the pleasures they are. to worship God. Brethren, and something. Glorify his name. The situation in your family should not stop you from worshiping God. Because this God, he is seeing you right now. He is seeing how your heart is. But if you can lift up your heart and say, God, you are great, you are mighty. Just like as the children of Israel, as the disciples did, that even the place where they were staying started shaking because these very people told God who you are. They told him he is the one that created the heavens and the earth. And with God, there is nothing impossible. We know, we can understand the statements of people around we can understand what the enemies are saying. We can see, we can hear the bragging of their, of, of their, of their sound. But God, you created. You created these heavens and the earth. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega. You are the beginning, you are the end. There is no one like you and there is none beside you. You cannot share your honor with anyone. Lord, we exalt you, God. We bless you. We worship you, Father. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify your name. Father, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the ancient of days. Father, you are God. You are great. You are mighty. What a mighty God you are. Oh, Father. What a mighty God you are. You can turn things around. You will do it today. You can turn our situations around because there is nothing too difficult for you. 
Jesus said, Jesus said, with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. You met Lazarus in the grave, and you said, Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says that he that was there three days came out. What a mighty God you are. Our situation may have been written off by men, but you are God. You are great, you are mighty. You are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. What a mighty God you are. What a mighty God you are. You are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we worship you. Father, we give you praise, we give you adoration. Thank you, Heavenly King. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, eternal rock of ages, for you are God. Is Lord, is Lord, Amen. He has risen from the dead. Is Lord, every meal shall Every talk of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord, is Lord, is Lord, Amen. He has risen from the dead, he is Lord. Every kneel shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. My brethren, we sought him. He is God. He is a good God. He's a mighty God. The thoughts of your heart, the feelings, the disappointments in your life should not stop you from praising this God. Because he's that God that can turn things around in your life. And all those days, all those years of sorrow, of agony, all those years of tears should be dried away. He's king, he's great, he's mighty. Oh, Father, we exalt you, oh God. We give you praise. Father, we give you adoration, so God, because you are God, because you are king, because you are the alpha, because you are the omega. What a mighty God you are. Oh, Father, what a mighty God you are. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah Yahweh. You are Jehovah Sikhedo. Father, we exalt you, O God, because you are Jehovah Shalom. Oh, Savior, we worship and we honor you, Father. We glorify your name, Heavenly King. Even, for, even in the life of that individual that has cancer, we exalt you, O oh God. We know you will wipe away every situation in that body. Father, do it to God, for you are God. Father, we honor you, O King. We worship you, King of glory. We exalt you, O God. Oh, what a mighty God you are. You are gone from beginning to the end. There's no father argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no breath for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the end. 
There's no brother argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. You are God. You are God all alone. You are God, you are God, from beginning to the end. For argument, you are God all by yourself. Brethren, let us exalt this God, this King. There is no one like Him, there is none beside Him. Oh, he is God. You know this God, he came out when there was storm and he was in the inner part of the ship and the storm was beating and the people were so scared. His disciples were scrambling. They did not know what to do. They quickly ran to him and they woke him up and they said, Care us Lord, that, us Lord that, that we perish. And Jesus Christ rebuked the way. Whatever storm, whatever storm is in your life, this God is able to do it. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. Every storm, every storm in your life, it will stop it because He is God. It will stop it because He is the King of Kings. He is the Jehovah Yahweh, Jehovah Nissi. He is Jehovah Sikhenu. What a mighty God. We thank you, we worship you, we bless you, we exalt you. Father, you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. Remember, this Jesus is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. And he was the one that fed, he was the one that fed thousands of people just with just five loaves of bread. Oh, what a mighty God we are. He is the miracle worker. What kind of miracle do you need in your life? I believe today you are going to get yours in the name of Jesus. What a great God. What a mighty God. He will turn things around in your life today. Because our God is good. He's great. He's mighty. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasures they are, and we created thou art what the Lord thou art worthy. Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasures they are, and we Worthy Lord, you are 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 Jesus Christ, you are what? Alpha and Omega, you are Jehovah Yahweh, you are what the Lord, you are. You are what the Lord, you are what the Lord, you are what the Lord. Jehovah Yahweh, you are what? Jehovah Nisi, you are. Oh, you are what the Lord. 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 You 
is the Lord of Lords. is Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Yahweh, the God that cannot fail. He cannot fail. He will never fail you. He is the King of Kings. is the Lord of Lords. He is the Ancient of Days. is the Eternal Rock of Ages. Whatever is the situation in your life, our God is worthy. His word is able to do all things and will do it in your life. Exhort him, worship him, bless him, glorify his name. This God is good, he is great, he is mighty, he is wonderful, he is great, he is great. Honor him, our God is good, he is great. What a mighty God we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the end. You created us to praise you. Precious Savior. You can see the lies of God that are connected to you. You can see in this place of God, whatever is the situation. We know you are worthy. You are great. You are mighty. There is nothing that they trust you for that they cannot get. Therefore, Father, we praise you. We worship you. We honor you. Even as we continue, you know, when we live here, Father, we are not going to stop praising you. We are asking you, Father, be exalted, be blessed, be glorified, be honored. Father, be exalted, O God. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you and God bless you.